We're back with Mario Rodriguez, Executive Director of the Long Beach Airport. Mario, the airport serves three million passengers a year mm -hmm. who are given this Long Beach welcome, this Long Beach experience when they deplane. And your airport, our airport, has 300,000 operations. I know from my mm -hmm. limited flying experience that operation means either a takeoff or Our a landing. landing. Yes. And a lot of that, of course, is the light aircraft mm -hmm. that are using some of the other runways. But the 37th busiest airport in the world, in the country, that's pretty impressive. Actually, it's the 37th in the busiest world. airport in the world. In yeah. the world. Yeah, it, 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 remember, there are much, much more components. We have people flying in, air carrier service, the airlines. We have UPS and FedEx. We have Gulfstream, which is extremely bills, busy building corporate aircraft. We have fixed-based operators with general aviation aircraft, a smaller type of aircraft, and it's a very, very, very busy air, airport as airports go. And we have that huge C-47. C-17. C-17, that yes. comes in. To me, it's amazing that that thing flies. It's so slow when it's landing, it's like floating like a blimp. Well, it just goes to show if you put enough power on an aircraft, it usually will fly. <laughs> well, uh, uh, let's get back to being voted one of the top 10 airports in the world. How in the world did they find us and, and, and have that kind of support? Well, think about it. We are competing against airports. For example, London Heathrow, that was, that's considered one of, the, one of the top 10 airports in the world by Fodor's, the, the travel, travel guide. guide that, that yeah. considered us one of the top 10, yeah. handles about 74 million passengers. We handle three. They also, they also, uh, they also put in the airport in Amman, Jordan, which is beautiful. They've spent an inordinate amount of money. A lot more than we do. Uh, actually, yeah, it, it's kind of a gross amount of money on building this. A lot more than we do. And it goes to show that bricks and mortars are bricks and mortars. What makes a difference are the people that work at our airport. That really is what makes a difference, where you're being greeted by our personnel. People uh -huh. are assisting you. And it's, that's part of the reason we won, because of the people working at the airport. Exactly. Not that, just the no, good design. No, it, it's all break. The design is beautiful. Yeah. The design is beautiful. But there are airports that have spent a lot more money and have iconic terminals. Yes and they don't win. And they don't win because they don't have the personnel that we do. We have a wonderful team. So the, the judges actually visit these oh, airports absolutely. and experience what a passenger experiences. And experience what a passenger experience. Yeah. Experience yeah. our personnel helping them, guiding them. Anything they need, we help them. We help them with their luggage if they need. Now, a lot of people may not fully realize this, but the airports are a very substantial economic generator for the region. Oh, it's huge. It's huge. Uh, it, I believe the data point is that if you add up all the direct and indirect employment that the airport generates, it's about 9% of all employment in the city of Long Beach. And $11 billion for the regional economy. That's it, a big number. It is. It is a huge number. There's a lot of people who work at the airport. There's a lot of people that locate in Long Beach because of the airport, because of the fact that you can move back and forth. Let's face it, nowadays, like it or not, aviation is part of our makeup. If, you were to, if you're in the service industry, and the service industry is one of the largest industries in the United States, you need to be able to move personnel around the country. Sure. You can't do that out of a remote area. And the airport complex supports 43,000 jobs. Yes. A lot of folks. Well, um, we hate to think of you as leaving us, but you've left your mark like the Lone Ranger with the silver bullet, and you're on to Indianapolis, Indianapolis. which is more than a speedway, clearly. Oh, it's, it's, it's a lot more than a speedway. And, you know, I'm going to take a little bit of Long Beach with me. Yeah. I love this city. And You're going to take the, the mug we gave you. And I'm yeah. going to take the mug. Okay. And I'm going to take a little bit of Long Beach with me. And uh, 
and uh, in, this is a small industry, and our, our paths usually cross over and over again, and we, same, we keep meeting the same old people. And Indianapolis is a complex of airports that you'll be running that can support up to, what, 30 million passengers a year? Yeah, Indianapolis, is a, it's a very... Ten times ten, our size. Ten times our size, and yeah. also it has the largest FedEx hub, in the second largest FedEx hub in the world. Yes. Well, you came from New Orleans... Came you from? stopped here for five years, and you're on to Indianapolis. And I'm off to Indianapolis, yeah. And uh, but travel is your business. Well, it, it come it, it's it's part of our DNA in this business. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and on to to different challenges. I but I love the city of Long Beach. Tell us what you love about the city as you uh, get ready to pack and depart, and you're going to start looking back and. What do you think you'll miss most? Ah, oh, the people. That, that's simple, Art. It, it's all about the people. And uh, people might think it's the weather. It's not. You know, I've, I love the weather, but I've lived in all over the United States. And actually, I lived all over the world. At one time, I lived in Hong Kong. I lived in Kuwait. And this is the best weather in the world. But it also is, it also has the best people in the world. Yeah. And the people are the ones that I'm going to miss. And the, there's a sense of community in Long Beach. Uh, it's been accurately described, at least in my mind, as the biggest small town in America. And people act that way. And it's a positive thing. The people still have community. They're yeah. bonded. It's not a transient community. It's a very strong community with very strong roots. And I was speaking to some friends who live up in Santa Monica. I didn't realize that the traffic nightmare that is uh, obvious in West L.A. extends as far out as Santa Monica. And this friend was describing how a five-minute trip from his home to his dry cleaner at the wrong time of day is a 20-minute trip. Uh, and uh, traffic is, uh, is, is, is uh, really uh, squeezing these folks. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, but you don't feel it here in Long Beach. The traffic is pretty good in Long Beach. It sure Beach. is. And I live right in the city. I love the city. And it takes me maybe 15 minutes to get to work. Now, you originally were from Cuba. And uh, how old were you when you left? Well, my, my parents were from Cuba. What's interesting is that um, I was born, I'm, I'm really a product of a revolution. I was born... Not the uh, Revolutionary War. No, the, the Cuban Revolution. <laughs> I, was born in, I was born in New York. My mother was a very, very... She had a very interesting life. She was part of the Cuban Revolution. She was an attorney, and she left the Cuban Revolution and was accused. You don't leave a communist revolution just haphazardly. No, she no. Was, she was young, and she was, I, I guess you could tell, a, you know, she was inspired. So in order to protest and protest that it wasn't going in the right direction, she resigned. And she was accused of anti-revolutionary ah. acts. So at that point, they're about to shoot her. So she eventually Got leaves the country and makes it to New York. My dad, under similar circumstances, leaves Cuba and makes it to New York. So I was born in New York. Who they would have thought? They would have never met. Okay, we'll continue with no. this fascinating biographical discussion after these messages. How do you like your chances the rest of the way? I got no idea. But I do know that if we stay with Naples Rib Company, at least we won't go hungry. Coach, what do you think about some of those questionable calls tonight? Oh, yeah, but if you want a sound call, I'd call Naples Rib Company. You can't miss on that call. Then Naples Rib Company is part of your game plan? There really is nothing more motivating than a great barbecue meal at Naples Rib Company. Victory or not, Naples Rib Company, great game plan. Founded in 1976, Polly's Gourmet Coffee is Southern California's most complete gourmet coffee store. Polly's has the best tasting coffee, freshly roasted every day right in the store. Plus a wide selection of teas, an in-house bakery, espresso bar, patio dining, and more. We also offer Wi-Fi, free internet access for all of our customers. Our nationwide clientele agree, when it comes to coffee, there's only one name to remember. Polly's, 4606 East 2nd Street, welcoming you into Belmont Shore. When I was a boy growing up in Italy, I had a dream to own my own store. I came to the United States and I worked hard as a tailor. 
Hi, I'm Umberto. I've been in Long Beach since 1960, carrying the finest quality men's clothing. It was a long way away, but styles are just around the corner. Umberto, 2141 Bellflower, Long Beach. Who needs this modern world? I can live just fine out here without the road rage and boy bands. Of course, I might miss my Charter HD with football on ESPN and Walking Dead on AMC. ESPN and AMC. And, well, Shark Week on Discovery HD. But that's all. AMC, ESPN, Discovery, TBS, and Comedy Central HD. But that's it. Except for HBO HD. Charter now has over 100 HD channels and more brilliant HD shows on demand than ever.